All right. Thanks everybody for joining. My name is Randall Stevens. Let's see if I can get my slides going here. Um, I'm going to spend a little time this afternoon uh, giving you a little background on the work that we've been doing here at Avail really over the past year and how that's now uh, manifested itself in the latest release of Avail. Um, so happy, uh, glad everybody was able to join this afternoon. I've got uh, two or three of my colleagues here uh, that are helping to monitor the webinar. So if there's something that comes up question-wise, uh, feel free to use the Q&A, or if you want to pose a question in the chat, you should be able to um, you know, direct that there. And then we will try to take some time at the end of the webinar and uh, make sure we get all your questions answered. Um, so as I said, my name is Randall Stevens. I'm, uh, I'm actually the founder of Avail and acting as CEO. Uh, but for those of you that know me, you know, I, I also spend probably most of the time around product with the engineering team and developing the product and spend lots of time with, I'm sure, many of you on calls talking about, um, you know, how to effectively use this tool. Um, we did just release the latest, I'll say, major release of Avail officially uh, mid-September. So it's been out now for about 30 days. <clears throat> what we're doing, uh, we're doing a series of webinars. As you can see here on the screen, this being the first kind of kickoff, where I am, um, I'm going to host these and give you kind of a little bit of the thinking, I guess, background and thinking about what drove some of the decisions and, and really just insights into how we're thinking about these problems, and then ultimately um, how that's manifesting itself in the software. Uh, we, we really believe that in order to make great software, that we have to be very tuned in with what people are trying to do with it, how, how they do that. And so we think it's important before you get new software in your hands, uh, that you get a little background on what what led us in these kinds of directions. So that's the goal of today. I'm going to, uh, you know, kind of kick this off talking about the way that we're thinking about search. And, uh, and then ultimately, I'm going to give you, a, I'll, 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 I'll spend some time running you through some, some of this slide deck, but I'm going to, uh, I'll also give you a quick demo of the actual software and show you uh, how this is all working. So if you haven't signed up for uh, the other part of the series, I guess uh, you can see how today goes. And uh, assuming that you get something out of this, you might want to sign up uh, for those remain uh, remaining uh, webinars that we're going to do because I'll touch on, on different parts of, of what's going on with the system and how we're thinking about it. <clears throat> all right. So the we're going to concentrate talking about search. So I kind of tee this up uh, to be, I guess, a little antagonistic, um, you know, but, I've, but I have, you know, as we've thought about as, and the team has worked on what we're trying to do, how we're trying to do it, how search, what are the problems with searching, you know, so we, we talk about this as a content management solution, uh, but, you know, content management is one of those terms that's thrown around. It means a lot of different things to a lot of different people, you know, those of you that are already using Avail or thinking about using it, we've been primarily focused on basically the files that are on your file system uh, and the data that you're using to get your work done every day. Um, so I kind of, you know, as I was thinking about how to how to tee up to talk about this, you know, the the, the saying that Google has it easy, um, you know, when you really do back up from the problem, um, my what I've jokingly told people is, oh, I wish we had it as easy as Google, but what we're trying to do and what we're trying to help our customers do with these tools is actually a harder problem. Um, so that's kind of how I want to kick this off is to kind of explain the way that we're thinking about this. So if you think about um, what Google does, Google has obviously been a master at helping us find information. So it, it was early and connected, you know, obviously via the internet to connect all this information and data. So it's helping us find information. And you can look at what we're trying to do uh, more, you know, more focused on how do I help you find a file or files that you're needing to do your work where your information and data is being stored in your, as part of your workflow. So 
that's the first thing is it's it's way different problems when you talk about finding information versus finding files. So, you know, I put this up, this was just a quick Google search of BIM modeling. And uh, obviously you can see their ads coming up and, you know, over here, they've done a good job of trying to pull the Wik Wikipedia definition up. <clears throat> but this is a good example of, you know, if I am going to Google and just typing in BIM modeling, I'm not looking for something very specific. In fact, if you look at how many results came back from just doing that search, there was over 34 million pieces of information that they found. So, you know, it would be a real challenge if, if there was one piece of information out of those 34 million that you needed to put your hands on, uh, you can imagine where Google is maybe not really tuned to solving that kind of a problem. But that really is what we're trying to tackle. Um, <clears throat> So I've just got a couple of other kind of examples here, screen grab. So this is uh, actually where we have, um, you know, the library stored on our internal network. And you can see here, right, this is the out of the box Revit content, uh, almost 4,000 files and, and close to 500 different folders. So that's really where we've been tuned into when we think about search, we're actually trying to help you put your hands on these files that you need uh, uh, to get your work done. And obviously, as you drill down into the file system where we've all been storing these kinds of things, you now have this problem of this kind of nested, uh, you know, deep folder, deep number of levels of folders that you're trying to keep this stuff organized in. So that's really been at the heart of what we're uh, what we've kind of saw as the problem. We were watching the way that that you all as customers were managing things on your networks and files, and we were doing it ourselves, and that became the problem set. So, when uh, one way to think about this is that where Google, the reason I claim that they've got it easy, they just have to give you an answer. They just have to try to pull back some information that you're going to say in the first page or two okay, I got something, I'm happy and I'll move on. Whereas you can think about what we've been trying to solve is can we help you find the answer? There's a file that I need to be able to put my hands on. Uh, how can I get to that? And what kind of information do I need to be able to, to do that? So uh, another way you know, that you can think about that is you know, sometimes we're all looking for a file. I'm looking for a photo or, but most of the time, we might be on this journey that says, no, I'm looking for a very specific photo or a very specific file. I'm looking for the file that fits this criteria. So I just kind of lay that out uh, to get you thinking about why these are different kinds of problems. And it'll start to inform, you know, why we've made certain decisions and what we're doing. So the other, the other thing that you then have to think about is, you know, breaking this problem set up into when am I browsing for things? I don't really know what I'm looking for. And sometimes that is the case versus that I am searching for something very explicit and trying to put my hands on it. So we've always described um, the, because, you know, 100% of our customers, 100, I'll, I'll even go deeper than that. 100% of companies and individuals in the world still use a file system of some type to store information. And it's that hierarchical folders and, you know, that's very limiting. Um, so we started very early referring to the problem of all of these files sitting over in file systems, wherever those file systems may be, uh, the loose content problem. So these are files that are very important. It's what we actually do every day when we're creating our work product. It's, it's creating a spreadsheet and saving that out as an Excel file or a Word document or a PDF document or a building a Revit family and saving that so that somebody, that either yourself or somebody else can use. All of that info and data that's part of our daily work product is ended up in these files and having to be stored somewhere so somebody else can either find it or, or you yourself can get back to that. So we refer to that as this loose content problem. Those files are being stored largely in file systems, either on your network or now in some cloud file system. Uh, and that becomes the challenge, right? There's inherent challenges with those file systems that I don't have to tell everybody uh, where they stand start to break down, uh, but, it, but that's where we've really tried to uh, uh, attack and tackle this as a problem set. 
Um, so this is just an example, right? This is off of my own machine yesterday uh, as I was putting this deck together. Uh, you know, there's 70, this is basically the user uh, kind of part where I store uh, my active data. So I've got 79,000 files that's in over 8,000 folders that's sitting, right? Almost hundred gigs of data. That's just kind of in my immediate hand, you know, on my laptop that I'm working off of. And, uh, you know, it's a lot of information, a lot of data to be able to put your hands back on. If I go look, um, I've actually begun using Avail uh, to, to look at my entire digital archive. So I've got a lot of archival data from, you know, years past that doesn't need to be kind of hot uh, sitting close to me, but it's sitting in, in backup, uh, you know, on drives that are external. So I've kind of cons started consolidating that. And you can see here, there's over 330, about 330,000 files and 25,000 folders. So this is just me, right? And this is the data that I've accumulated. Uh, and, and, you know, it's almost 750 gigabytes worth of data that's sitting there. So this is becoming the problem. And again, this is just one person. So you can imagine at scale what's going on around projects and project teams and in organizations where they're producing lots of info and data. And then uh, this is just an example when we're doing our demos, which I'll do here in a minute. We actually just have a drive that has content in it that we demo with. And that already has 100,000 files in it in close to 6,000 folders, right, that we use to demonstrate, uh, you know, what you're able to do with the veil. So uh, don't have to be be uh, belabor that point that it's a lot of info and data. One thing I want everybody, though, to, to think about, right, cloud, cloud has become the, the buzzword of the last, you know, five years, if not 10 years, cloud storage and all these things. Don't be confused. <laughs> you go to any of these cloud storage solutions and they are all just another file system. In fact, I just put up this graphic, this, you know, if you're using BIM 360, what do you do? You create folders and you create places to store, right? Everybody has been doing it the same way. I think everybody just basically um, says that's what people are used to. That's what I'm going to continue doing. But, uh, but it that's what we view as the big problem. We're all producing so much information and data. It's now living in so many different places uh, that it's becoming very difficult to get your work done very efficiently because it's so hard to put your hands on info and data. It's hard to put it on even if you were the one that created it. Um, now imagine how hard it is when somebody else created it and you're not sure where they put it or it ended up in you know in the wrong place. Um, so a very complicated problem. Um, we're excited to work on it and we think that you know we're at least uh, starting to make some headway into how to think about uh, tackling this moving forward. <clears throat> so when we're talking about file systems, let me take a quick drink of water. When we're talking about file systems, whether that's in the cloud or your network or your local machine, wherever that storage file system is, you can now think about that file system as being serving two purposes. It's used for storage, but you're also then trying to largely use Windows File Explorer as an interface to that storage system in order to get information back. So you can think about that as storage and retrieval. The reality uh, of these file systems is they are, there's nothing wrong with them for storing. They are absolutely terrible retrieval systems. And again, I think, you know, it's like, um, We've been using Windows File Explorer, some form of it, for 40 years now. Those of you that are old enough to have been, been using a computer since uh, the early, the first ones, first personal computers at least came out in the 80s. And it's worked okay, but uh, we really believe that we're at this breaking point now where it's like, look, this just does not work anymore. And it's actually probably uh, to our benefit that a lot of things are starting to move to the cloud. Uh, it's it's actually exacerbating the problem. Now you've got data in cloud storage system over here and network over there and local machine over here. It's just, it's becoming even more complicated because we got data and uh, being stored in so many places. But when you start looking at them, they all are file systems and they all 
basically resort to using the same kind of methodology for kind of hierarchical, um, you know, folder management in order to do that. So what we've been focused on with Avail is, you know, if I back up a slide, we've been focused on attacking where that file system is starting to fail. And that is the retrieval side of the equation. So our focus has been on content retrieval. So we made some very early decisions with what we were doing on Avail that we didn't want it to become yet another storage location. We said, let's let's leave all the data where it's being stored. There's nothing wrong with the way it's being stored and where people are making those choices. What we should focus on is nipping away at the uh, weak points uh, on the retrieval side of that. And I think it's served us well um, to date. And we're uh, very, we're, we, we believe that your info and data that you're producing not only is going to keep exponentially increasing in volume, but the number of places where that data lives or wants to live is going to also be expanding. And those things in combination mean that you're, there's going to have to be some new ways to be able to, uh, to manage that and for users to be able to get to that info and data. So, um, you know, back to this, uh, you know, browsing versus searching, uh, you know, you do both. And so we've had to accommodate both. So one way you can think about what we're doing with Avail is to is to replace what you used to do in Windows File Explorer. And if you tuned in uh, about a month ago, uh, as we were leading up to the release of, uh, of this newest version of Avail, I did another webinar where I was talking about, you know, kind of the history of, you know, content. Content's at the core of all we're doing. Content is king. But in when I, when I start talking about what we're doing with Avail, what you really uh, you'll hear us talking about context a lot because when you dig into the problem, it's not a problem of storing it and that the data's there. It's a retrieval problem. And if you don't have good context for understanding how to reach back in there across all of that, uh, you know, voluminous amount of files and data, it gets very difficult without context to be able to help you pull that information forward or put your hands on exactly uh, what you're looking for. So you can, you can think about, right, of course you have to have the content, but if you can't get back to it and can't find what you're looking for, you know, it's for not. So, um, so this gets into what, what we've started doing with the product, how we've started trying to, um, to build context into and help you get new context into your info and data so we can do a better job of helping you uh, put your hands on it. So the first thing for those of you that are customers, you know that we use a metaphor of channels inside of Avail for organizing data. Um, you know, you can see here that that I'll a lot of times refer to those channels. You know, uh, if I'm talking to people and explaining, I use analogies of like it's a music playlist because a lot of people uh, obviously love music and, and maybe a built out music playlist. And there's a, a it's very analogous to being able to build that. Another way to think about it is, you know, these are just organizational buckets. So if I create a channel, it's going to have some context. I'm going to name that channel something so it has some meaning and I'm going to put data into it so that I've created this. Um, uh, you know, kind of subset of data that lives in this channel that means something by the way that you, by what you put in there and what you've called it. So um, I'll often say that this is the really, the, when you think about search, it is the first sort. So one, by organizing it into some channel that's providing some context for that information. And it's not, maybe it's not as important about what's in the channel, but it's what's not in the channel because when we're swimming in this world of all this data, by going to a channel that's supposed to have certain information in it, I've basically told the system that I'm not interested in anything else except what's in this channel. So it's a way of, of kind of performing that first search or first sort of the information and data that you're trying to get to. So when you look in the newest uh, uh, interface of Avail, the 4.0 uh, uh, release that we uh, that, that, that is just hot off the, um, hot off the burner from about a month ago that we came out of beta with it. The, uh, we put a lot of emphasis on, on uh, bringing these channels kind of to the front. Uh, this is, I'll, I'll give you a live demo here in a second, but this is you know what the now kind of home screen looks like in Avail. And each of these are channels and we're giving you the ability to add graphics 
of those, you know, but what's important here is that each of these channels, you know, they are blank buckets and you can put anything you want. So you can see in our demo channels that I'm showing you here, it might be broken up by the type of application software. So obviously if I'm working in Revit, I wanna be focused on Revit content. I don't need to see SketchUp models or God forbid you're bringing AutoCAD. Uh, data into your Revit projects, but uh, you can think about just making this kind of the first uh, way of sorting out or dividing, right? You can put it by application type, uh, but you can also think about, you know, you know here's a channel of textures, uh, assets that, that make sense. It's a library of those kinds of assets. Could be a third party like ArcVision's RPC content, or it could be, you know, more general like a marketing channel where I've got a lot of marketing assets and I could have a lot of different types of files as I'll show you when I give you this demo in a channel like that. But if I'm, you know, if I'm wanting to get to marketing materials, I can go to that channel and forget about all this other info and not have to wade through it. So, uh, you know, I think, um, uh, you know, channels are an important piece of us giving you the tools to begin to put some contextual information. On one hand, it's no different than if you went and created a folder over on the file system to put those kinds of things in, but you'll also see that we're, we're trying to do what we call flatten that, you know, everybody understands how the complexity that starts to happen when you start creating hierarchical file folders. We call it file folder hell. It's like folder under folder under folder. And at some point you're, you're, you're wanting to give more information. That's why you keep creating folders, but it becomes very unwieldy, unmanageable and very hard to retrieve and navigate through that kind of a system. So uh, you can think about channels in avail as giving you know, one big kind of broad stroke way to, uh, to, to be able to start to organize and provide context, right? To the information that's held in that channel. So the up until this latest release, you know, when we were the last three plus years that avail has been available, we've used this channel metaphor as a way for you to organize and manage your data and get it into the system. And we've allowed you to search on those channels. So, uh, you know, you can think about that when you're in a channel and you're performing a search, that that is constrained, that we're only, and that's what we've been doing with avail is we've been only searching the info that was in that channel. And so that kept the noise out so that you weren't uh, seeing other info and data uh, as you did those searches bleed into that. But of course, you know, um, you know, and here's an example, you know, of what, what you've, um, if you're a customer, what you've been uh, doing inside, I can go into a channel of this Revit content and type in the word cabinet and see, you know, a subset of data. Here's 51 files. And then using this kind of um, filters panel, to open up and be able to give you now secondary kind of information, you know, beyond just cabinet that you can now further filter down that information. Uh, you know, it's been a, I think it's been effective and is a powerful way to start thinking about, um, you know, being able to organize and get to this information and drill down as quickly as possible. So this kind of leads though to to, uh, I think we kind of teased out in the email that sent that this is like our number one feature that's been requested over the last few years has been that that's now manifested is, can I search across everything? So I will pause for effect, take a drink of water. Um, so technically it was, it's not that difficult for us to be able to search across everything. I mean, uh, we can do the search and we can go find everything that matched that and bring it back to you. But we were kind of slow to get this feature developed because we knew that that wasn't gonna solve the big problem, which is in an ever growing amount of, of body of content, if I go and type in cabinet or panel detail or bollard or whatever it is that I'm going to go on a search for and I type that word in once we've started indexing more and more of your info and data the we would we would consider the the results that would come back off that simple search could be very voluminous and we would refer to it as noisy you're going to get a lot of results back right just like you do in Google when I typed in that search there was 34 million <laughs> results that came back. So ultimately a very noisy amount of data because of the volume of data that they're doing. So the trick is how can we help you now narrow in to find that uh, proverbial needle in the haystack that you were trying to uh, uh, trying to find. So this is why channels, right? Or at least the first step towards 
having some semblance of being able to help to find the information you're looking for. So now what we're doing uh, with this latest release of Avail is backing out to this home screen, allowing you to do a search, which is gonna search across everything, but our approach to this is that we're going to find a lot of information. Our job now from a user experience, user interface is, can we bring you back enough information so that we can basically, you know, I always think about it as, I need to ask you a couple more questions before I'm gonna help you put your hands on exactly the file. So we've been calling this now what we call progressive search. You're never, you're, you're in the world that we all live in and what we're trying to do and accomplish in our daily work, it's unlikely that you're gonna type in a word or type something into a search box and get exactly to what the, the exact file that you're looking for. More likely, you're gonna search across, have lots of different info to choose from that's gonna be related to that. And then we see it as our job is, can we understand the context of what's going on so that we can provide you enough information that within a couple of clicks that you can narrow down to a very small subset of info to be able to put your hands on, on that piece of information. So we think that this is an important piece of being able to, um, to not only manage the amount of content that you're throwing at Avail today, but as I'll talk a little bit about expanding the mission of what we're doing to be able to touch any and all of the, the info that you're trying to use every day in these different systems uh, uh, to be able to put your hands on. So uh, again, I'm gonna give you a live demo of this, but here's some just screen grabs. Now I type in the word stare, I get back lots of stare results, but what's important about uh, the innovation that we've done in this new interface is Maybe the most important thing is we bring back this, what we now call channel filters. We bring back the context that we found these results and these now become uh, filters that I can now say, okay, I found stare information, but I found a lot of different places where there's stare information. And now I need, now I'm showing you, hey, help me help you. Here are the channels that I found that in. And you can then quickly click on one of these and filter down and see you know, subsets of this data. If this is the subset of data, I can actually just double click on that channel filter now, go into that channel and then be presented with this secondary information, right? This is the progressive part of the search challenge, which is start with what you're looking for, we'll bring back information, and then we need to provide you more information so that in two or three clicks, you can try to narrow this down. And we do that in this kind of progressive, uh, uh, progressive set of steps. Um, the, the webinar that we're going to do next week, we're going to focus more on the visual parts, but I do, I, in, the, in the context of search, I want to at least touch on today that, that we think in, that visuals maybe are as important as the text part of the search. A lot of this info and data, especially in this industry that we're all working with, is very visual in nature. We as designers and a design engineering community are probably very highly visual in a lot of the things that we do just by nature. So we put a lot of emphasis on being able to not only bring this info back, but can we show you what that stuff looks like and uh, we can take advantage. You know, as I say, I like to say it's like, look, human visual acuity, our ability as humans to see and hone in on things, which is very little info. Uh, is a very powerful thing. So that's why you'll see us putting these new visuals on the front of channels for what we call channel cards. It's why we put a lot of focus on how well we can handle the thumbnails, how well we can do um, high resolution previews of these kinds of things and leverage that we have just great ability. You know, as you see here, I'm looking for a detail, but you know, can I pop open and see a high resolution version of this before I have to go do something else, right? The, we, we consider this all part of the journey of being able to put your hands on the right info and the right content. Um, so we'll talk more about the visual part of it next week. Um, so uh, let me do a quick demo and then I'll come back and kind of end this and we'll open this up for questions um, uh, that you may have along the way. All right. So I am going to bring Avail Desktop. This is the new Avail 4.0 uh, interface, and I'm just going to go full screen. But I don't want to always start this, uh, you know, kind of minimize so that everybody understands it's a piece of software, not a browser that's running. And I'm going to go full screen so that you can see it. 
So um, if you're around me uh, you, and, and see me with my camera, I'm usually talking with my hands and I've noticed when I demo, I demo with my mouse. So I'm usually fidgety and I'm always scaling things up or moving things around. But it also is to uh, demonstrate that, you know, we're trying to build a um, interfaces that are very flexible. Uh, the amount of info that you can see. Um, just to, just quickly, this these are channels in Avail. This isn't content. So I've got about 50 or 60, uh, didn't do the count here of how many channels that I used to demo with. Um, and you can see I can, these are what we call channel cards. And, uh, you know, for these channels, you can kind of see a little template. I actually did that in uh, uh, just use PowerPoint to build a quick template that I could drop in and kind of start to standardize uh, a look and feel across this. So, you know, you can put a little time. It's very easy when you've got a channel uh, like this that you want to put, uh, you know, a, um, uh, you know, customize these what we call channel cards. If I drill in by double clicking into one of these channels, oh, of course, I would pick one that I'm not an editor on. Let's go over here to this Revit. If I wanted to change what that channel card looks like, I can go up here into now what we call the publisher bar, go to edit the channel, and I can either drag and drop an image on here or go browse to change that image. And it's that quick and easy. You can actually in place change the name of the channel, add a description. Uh, so all that's very helpful. Uh, the other thing uh, that's important about when you're setting up your channels, you know, when you create a channel, uh, it's going to pop up. You give the channel a name, but you can also give it a description. What's important about starting to think about that, that is all information that's searched, that's being searched. So for instance, if I go up now to the to the primary search bar and I type I start to type in sketch, you'll what we do is dynamically find channels that match that. And it's not just the name of the channel. We're also searching the um, the description of that. So for instance, let's see if I can remember once, if I start to type in, well, images, let me just go find where I've, or I can go, let's do this. So I'm gonna go into my Revit channel and I'll go back to my um, edit the channel and where I don't have a description in here, I'm gonna say, this is the out of the box Revit library for, you know, Revit 2020. So I'm just more descriptive about what that is. What I want you to see is that that information is actually searchable. So if I were to start typing in OOTB, you'll see that it hits on that and is, it helps me to find that channel very quickly. And I can just in one click jump right into that channel. So as the number of channels, which is obviously going to increase as you keep using Avail, we're, you know, we're, we're tackling more and more data. What is the right context? How much information do we have to have? And how quickly can we help you put your hand back on it? Uh, but the nice thing here, right, if in that example, if I were to type in casework and do a search from home, home, here comes all of the casework right, results, the actual content, which, you know, if I see what I need, I can double click or drag and drop or use it right out of this interface. But the, uh, the, the part that, you know, you need to start to understand in what we're doing is this channel filters up above, which is, you know, we found 507 results that match casework. Uh, but we're, we're more importantly, maybe showing you up here where we found those. And it goes from the most populous channels uh, where we found that information to if, if I'm using, I'm just using my scroll wheel to scroll across there to the least number that we're over here in a marketing channel there, you can see an image that was called casework. And all I have to do is click on those. I can actually control select and unselect those things, but it allows me to, uh, to jump around on and be able to um, quickly, you know, narrow down uh, through this kind of content. So if I was looking for something like I was just doing some sample searches earlier, like I'm looking for a bollard, so I can, again, it's going to search across all of this information that I have available. I can see that it found all kinds of information. It looks like details. And, uh, but if I look across my channel context, it's like, look, here's projects that have bollard in them. So the nice thing about this interface is I can filter and kind of see it. I can just double click on that now. And it's going to take me 
into search already performed and then presents me with this secondary filter of saying, okay, you know, I've got more information, right? This is the kind of uh, progressive part of the search. Yes, I'm looking for drafting views that have to do with bollards on a specific project. So this is allowing me to, uh, you know, quickly uh, try to narrow down uh, search for that information. So what have I done there? Bollard, drafting views, subset of data. find that info. All right. Uh, and, you know, it, it, it doesn't have to be as, you know, technical. Like I said earlier, you know, here I was looking for like an avail logo. It could be, you know, if you've got your marketing info, marketing content uh, in the system, you should be able to, you know, do searches like this, obviously come back with a very visual uh, representation. There's lots of logos. But you can see again up above. I found this in different uh, different channels. There's my avail marketing channel, and I can filter that info out. And then uh, I think is why maybe I'm having uh, internet connectivity problems. Um, but I can double click and drill into that and be able to you know come into this channel now and now say yeah I'm looking for a Photoshop file right that's related to my avail logos uh, whatever it is I'm trying to put my hands on so uh, we think it's a you know it was a, a noble problem to try to go attack um, you know we think we've taken a pretty good uh, first step at understanding the problem uh, you know, digging as we dug into it, how to start solving uh, the problem. Uh, I'm going to go back to my slides now and talk a little bit about kind of where we're going, and then I'll we can open this up to questions if anybody uh, has any. But um, the order of which we're doing things, we think, all right, we had to start solving if we're going to start helping you manage more and more data we had to first figure out how can we, as we're searching across lots of data, bring back and make sense of the info that's coming back. So that's why so much work was done over this past year on starting to think about that as a problem set and then how to set the interfaces up to allow us to do this kind of progressive search. Because, you know, for those of you that have been, uh, you know, been sitting in roadmap conversations, we're working on, what uh, what we call workspaces, which is around how can we help you manage all of your project information. And that is usually orders of magnitude more info than your library information. So, um, you know, I've always described this as I can walk into any firm and almost predictively split their bifurcate, split their network into two halves. There's the part of the network where they store their reusable assets and libraries of things. And then there's another part of the network where all the project data lives. So we've kind of, you know, we've got a lot of our customers that are already using Avail to try to manage some of that project data. The metaphors of channel can work, uh, but it is limiting uh, when you start looking at how much data that is and how you might want to work on that. So that's why we're introducing a new concept called workspaces uh, that's going to be designed specifically to manage project kind of information and data. Uh, and that's uh, that's part of our kind of progression. And then I'll just kind of flash this up uh, to give you just a kind of quick glance of what our roadmap is. Uh, we're continuing to work on APIs uh, and opening up a lot of work going on behind the scenes on what we now call version two V2 APIs. Uh, we are working on and we hope to have at least a, a some release out before the end of the year of what this new tool for Revit called Harvest, which is helping to maintain what we call container libraries or uh, somebody was calling them warehouse libraries the other day, but basically RBT files that have your views and sheets and schedules and everything that's not a family in it. Uh, we've got some really cool stuff that we're working on in helping to manage that. If you've been on some of the calls, you might have heard me over the last few months starting to talk about this concept of lenses. We're actually building a plugin architecture for Avail and plugins to Avail we're calling lenses. And the idea is that it's going to start to let you connect uh, different information together. So instead of 
thinking about avail just being a point source to go touch a file. It's when I get to that detail and the detail's got a PDF that's associated with it or a URL to a, a intranet or website that uh, belongs to it. We're starting to work on this. How do we fuse this information together? And that information could be in different, in different places. So uh, we're working and we think we'll be able to start showing you some uh, early versions of some of those uh, lenses uh, before the end of the year as well. And, and this is all part of connecting to more data, which brings us to this next slot, which are these connectors. We've uh, started earlier this year, starting to build out data connectors to different sources of where that information is. So you can imagine something like BIM 360 Docs, if that's where you're storing your project information and that's your primary hub for that. We see our goal is being able to fuse what may still not be in BIM 360 Docs. It's maybe sitting on your uh, corporate network or over in OneDrive or some other location is to be able to provide one way through a workspace in Avail to connect and see all of that information so that it's uh, relieving the users of having to understand where all the different places where all this information lives. Uh, and then ultimately, as I alluded, this, this workspace concept, which is going to be an ongoing long project about how we'll start nipping away at, at some early capabilities around that, but ultimately how do we grow uh, to be able to make this hopefully an interface for, uh, for being able to manage uh, you know, projects and project teams around what you're doing. Not to replace what you're doing in BIM 360 or some other place, but to solve the problem that these this information is living in lots of different places. And this is what I said at the top of the uh, top of the call. We believe that that this data is going to live in more and more places. And what we hope we're doing with Avail is freeing you up for that to live in different places and not be worried about that it's going to become cumbersome to manage or uh, terrible for your users to actually manage and get to this info and data. Um, so I, I, uh, I used, you know, the, just, uh, just caught myself saying what we believe. Uh, if you haven't seen it, uh, I actually pinned a, a, a blog post that actually uh, I pinned most of that uh, one Saturday afternoon, not for for your consumption, but for some internal consumption for some new members on, on our team. And I just sat and started writing this, you know, statement after statement about what we believe and why we're doing the things that we're doing and, and why the software does what it does. And we ended up turning that into kind of a, a public facing blog post that you, if you haven't seen it, I'd encourage you to go out and take a look at that. But it's actually at the underpinnings and it kind of describes what is at the core of what we're doing, what we see the problem set of, what we really believe the problem is and why we're still excited every day to come and work on these problems and, and help you as, 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 uh, you know, as our customers uh, be more efficient at getting your work done every day. So I'll shut up and uh, let's see if we've got any questions. Randall, you got one question uh, posted in the Q and A. Noticed on the search, there was duplicate results. Does that mean that there are identical content located in different channel? Uh, yes, you could see uh, content in uh, multiple channels. I think, I'm not gonna swear to this, but we've got a point release already coming out for that where on that global, what we now call global search, that we're only gonna display one of those, even though it may, if it's the same piece of content in multiple contexts, uh, that way you don't get to see those duplicates. So uh, yeah, somebody may have seen, uh, but that's coming uh, actually as early as next week. I think we're gonna have a, uh, a uh, just a point release that's gonna address some of these, uh, th those kinds of issues. And we're, um, you know, we've got quite a few people on this call, but if somebody wanted to, uh, we could unmute you if you wanted to ask any voice questions or. We've got a comment in the chat um, that uh, the re resolution of the image preview has been dramatically improved. So small, small detail, but big value. So someone just wanted to point that out, so. Yeah, thank, thank you. Uh, we did, you know, part of that interface redesign was to, uh, I'll pop this back over so you can see it. Um, you know, part of this interface design, we used to 
uh, at the top right, the icon that was in the version prior to this, we called the properties panel. We've actually renamed that and it's actually at the bottom now. It's got an eye for information. And if you mouse over, it says show details. Well, this will show you the channel details, but when you select a piece of content, it's what we used to call the properties panel. And this is a little, you know, it's like you get to see the little thumbnail uh, and it's a little, you know, I use the word wonky. It's like, okay, if I'm a publisher, I probably want to see these tags and be able to get to this kind of information or see how many channels that that lives in. But it's not the normal consumer or somebody using the system. This isn't something they probably want to see all the time. So what we've done is, is basically instead of trying to put all of that info in one thing, we now call this the preview panel and it's 100% focused on visuals. So um, we got rid of all the text clutter, all of that information. So a lot of this, uh, and hopefully those of you, uh, you know, a lot of people, probably designers that are on this call, part of our design challenge with building good software is not not cluttering this up, you know, it's really hard to be simple. Uh, and, and it's actually one of, I think, a testament that this is a good release is it actually feels like it's getting simpler, which is harder to do because of course everybody wants this feature and that feature and it's easy to just start plopping buttons everywhere. We're really, we have to fight it ourselves. Like, hey, can we minimize how much and just say no sometimes and try to keep this simple, which we think is the, the trick to actually making it usable and useful over longer periods of time uh, for what, what we're setting out to do. So, um, great, any, any more questions? If you've got questions, queue them up. Yeah, so, one question on the harvest uh, release date. No release date. Uh, we're still hammering away coding at it right now. Uh, I, I, I was on a call just before this and somebody was asking me uh, when, when, we, when they could get it. And I said, well, I, if I talked to you in August, I probably told you in September, which now in hindsight was uh, a fib, but also I wouldn't have told you that if I didn't believe it at the time. What's happened is as we've dug into it, uh, it's caused us to go and, and build some new underlying capabilities in the avail platform in order to do what we wanted to do. So it's taken us a little bit more time on that front to, to, to do that. Um, I'll tell you this now, I think we're going to be able to get it to you before the end of the year, uh, at least out in beta and start uh, being able to test it and uh, get some feedback. But um, um, so it's in my, my kind of favorite thing to tell people now is it's going to be ready when it's ready. I know nobody wants to hear that, but uh, we try to, we're, we're working feverishly, right? It, it may look like calm waters, but there's a lot of work going on behind the scenes and trying to get all this stuff done. And uh, so anyway, it's, uh, it, it should be good and, and worth the wait. Another question, RPC content to be delivered through Avail or the dashboard? Yeah, great question. So this has been an ongoing project. You can already see content. You can go to the marketplace if you haven't already, and you'll find the uh, ArcVision uh, channels uh, of information. So I say it's ongoing. Um, you know, the real challenges are we've, we've all, it's not just delivering the content, it's been trying to, to revamp and use Avail for license management and some of the things that are going on on that front. Um, but, uh, but, but yeah, there's already customers out there using it uh, to be able to manage and get to their RPC content inside of these channels. And if I go to one of these, like here's the newest, what's now called our RPC Prime with a lot of the new content in it. And uh, here's an example where if I open up my preview pen, I'm gonna pick one of these, it's maybe not, um, Let's see if I can actually get one of the, we've been um, starting to, um, this is an example, I'll say this is an early example of a kind of a lens concept. This is an RPC viewer that's built into Avail. And you can see this is, you know, it's, it's a little bit slow right now. Um, but the kind of cool thing is, is this is actually ArcVision's viewer and this is actually happening on their server, server side. So 
we're really working on ways to connect to data sources and be able to handle and manage these things from within Avail. And you know, the cool thing about this is they'll continue to improve on this without have without us having to be involved. So this idea that this stuff starts to come in and be connected and what we're doing with our lenses is going to allow people, our partners, to start keep doing their part of the work and improving on it quickly without um, without us having to be a bottleneck in that. So hopefully faster improvement, faster delivery of these kinds of things um, as we move forward. One addition, can you organize Dynamo scripts? Dynamo scripts. So I come back to home and start typing Dynamo that I've got a Dynamo channel that I use to demo with. So if I go into that channel, I'm going to see all of my Dynamo scripts, including the ability, you know, one of the nice things about Avail is, you know, Dynamo scripts by default don't produce very good thumbnails, but you have ability to override those in Avail and be able to provide some nice visual like this. Um, what I'll say about Dynamo scripts, we've got plenty of customers that are using Avail to manage their Dynamo scripts. And you can see, you can tag them, uh, be able to, you know, filter out those don't have any nice thumbnails. Um, you know, tag them, search them, be able to get to them. Here's what you can't do. You cannot drag and drop these scripts onto the player that's built into Revit, which is unfortunate. And that's because Revit does not support drag and drop actions of their own scripts onto their own player. So um, go ask go ask Harlan or, or Sasha or somebody and put it on the list that you'd like to be able to drag and drop. We, we haven't dug into it much, but one of the things that we've kind of had on the list to try to look at is our own Avail browser that runs in Revit. Could we support actually playing, build, basically build playing capabilities for scripts into our browser so that as you would manage these in the library, they can be presented, tagged, and then execute those from within our browser instead of trying to use the player that's in Revit. And that might be the way that we could solve that problem. So um, we, um, we haven't done that yet, uh, but I, we've kind of got that on the list of something to look at. So if that's something that you all think would be helpful or would want to push it, you know, send us, uh, send us a note and, and let us know what you think about that. So. Question via the Q and A: Can we track all Revit links images that that are placed in the main model? Also, if yes, can we track nested uh, nested links as well? Um, so we're not doing anything on that front currently. Um, I think what's exciting, though, this lens concept that we're doing—it's the perfect example of a lens. You know you want to see different information at different times by different people for different purposes. So we're swimming in all this information. So we, we sit in a position like with the avail browser for Revit to actually see all that info in the project. In fact, if you take the Revit project browser now and go into project mode, you can see that we're, we're looking at all the data that's in the project. So the, I guess I'll answer that kind of generically. We're not doing that today, but we do sit in a position where we've touched that data. So it's not very far-fetched to say, okay, if that's something that you think would be useful, let's build a lens, right? That you could like click on and in the avail interface, it would like show you that kind of info in some, you know, in some way that, that makes sense to be able to do that. So this is what we're, the reason that we're, we're working so feverishly on both the APIs and now this new lens concept is, you know, we could sit here all afternoon and if people were verbose, they could probably throw out, could you do this? Could you do this? Could you do this? Could you do that? So the answer to all that is yes. The problem becomes which ones should we do first and how much of this? So by us concentrating on the core APIs and now getting this plugin architecture in place, it's going to allow either a lot more of our team or different members of our teams to do these kinds of things much more quickly, or actually allow you or third parties to start developing these kinds of capabilities on top of what we're doing with Avail. So 
that's why we're that's why we're putting so much emphasis on this as part of the platform is get the core done and then we've got these kind of infinite number of possibilities of now that we're touching the data in all these different places to fuse that you'll notice i used the word fusion earlier how do we fuse that information how do i fuse data that might be in the project that i want to now use and see and do like those links that you just brought up so um I think lots of exciting uh, possibilities there. And some people are probably sophisticated enough that they're starting to do things with, uh, you know, uh, you know, either Dynamo, writing Dynamo scripts to go and do those kinds of things. And, you know, you, uh, you know everybody should continue to do that. What we're going to try to do with the uh, lens concept is basically make those lenses. Those will become you know, content, you think of them as content plugins that can be installed. And then depending on what you're doing, right, you'll be able to say, oh, this makes sense to me, I'll be able to turn this lens on and see a different kind of uh, different kind of info being presented to me in the interface. Can you find content depending on its parameter value? Can you search on parameters? So, um, so the answer is yes. And no, <laughs> so I'll I'll uh, I'll split that. We have what we call a Revit uh, tag generator, which can pull any parameter info in as a tag and avail, which makes it searchable. So the answer is yes, you can pull all that info in and make it searchable. What it's not, it's great for things like when we're pulling out Revit category because I want to see casework as a tag. What it's not very good for is if you've got parameters that have values like width and I've got a number in my casework that's, you know, type catalog says it's 22 inches and 24 inches and 28 inches and 32 inches and so forth and so on. So bringing that kind of data in those values is not a very good interface because those don't, those aren't great tags, even though they're searchable, they kind of become noise in your tag system. So what we've been working on is, and this isn't very, is intentionally not visible. We're breaking, we generically call this information metadata and in avail right now in the interface, we manifest that data as what we call tags, which are meant to be visually consumed and searched. We're also behind the scenes building out and able to store metadata. So much like those parameters are stored say around a Revit family file, we're storing now metadata information related to a file that's in avail and that's not just revit but any digital piece of content we can store metadata what that storage of that data lets us start to do then you can imagine now in the search can we now have a lens that lets us search by ranges of data say on those parameter files um, so we're working through this is kind of a progression of capabilities underlying capabilities that we're kind of layering up and building um, so that's why i have to answer that one yes you can but i'd also say it's not optimal for doing uh, probably what you're alluding to want to do but we're working on some new capabilities that are going to allow that to happen so appears to be it well great well those so we're right up uh on an hour uh thanks everybody um to for for joining this afternoon hopefully that gives you my goal was to give you a little bit of insight of understanding why when you open up the new interface and see us doing certain things to give you a little insight into what the thinking was that drove us in those directions to make those kinds of decisions. Maybe you'll think that we made the wrong decisions, but at least you'll understand what the rationalization was and how we've approached uh, the problem. But but it's also part of, we, we communicate uh, a lot and often we hope with our customers. So we think it's important uh, that we're having this kind of, you know, while this wasn't a, a, a lot of back and forth dialogue, that you all are aware of what we're doing and what we're thinking. And then, you know, you're, you, you now are free to influence us based on what you're hearing us thinking to say, no, you're thinking about this wrong, or there's another way to think about, or here's another set of problem that we've specifically got that we might be able to, to, to you know, use what we're doing here to help solve. So uh, that's the goal of these webinars. I'm gonna do, um, we're gonna do three more of those, uh, one each week and talk about different aspects uh, of, of the system and, and what's driving us in these directions. So hopefully uh, I'll see the majority of you uh, plus new faces next week. So thanks for joining.